Hello! In this video, I'm going to be showing you another technique that I use to make polygon hair in Blender. Keep in mind that this is not a step-by-step -step video tutorial. Here's a picture of the final sort of look that we're going to achieve. Um, it's not a finished product by any means, it's just to show you the method that I use to do this sort of technique. Also, I add a little bit more to it at the end of the video. It's not recorded, but I'll show you some pictures at the end. With this method, just like the last one, I'm going to start with um, particle hair. I'm going to use the particle hair to make the curves that I want for the hair. Now, when you're doing this uh, for a finished type product, you will probably want to add more sections, um, which will be more work. Uh, there will be more uh, strands or chunks rather to manipulate, um, but I think the end result will be much better than uh, what I end up with here. Throughout this section, all I'm doing is adding strands, uh, combing them, cutting them, lengthening them, shortening them, or whatever I need to do to achieve the sort of style or shape that I want. Convert the hair into a mesh. Then we'll convert the hair, the mesh hair that we have, into a curve. Now we're going to go into the curve menu and we're going to play around with the bevel effect. We're also going to change that to full so that uh, it's a tube and not just half one. And then we're going to play with the resolution so we have more geometry to work with. Next, we go into edit mode and we select all of the tips of the hair that we want to taper. And we use the Alt S command in order to make those skinnier, along with the proportional editing tool. Uh, Alt S instead of just S to make it skinnier or fatter rather than scaling it. Um, it's, it's a nice uh, thing to know. Makes things a lot easier. Once we have the taper that we want, we need to convert it back into a mesh so we can start to edit it. Before we mess with the hair, we're going to lay out the UVs. It makes it easier uh, to do it now rather than later because later we're going to be editing the hair and then the UVs will be uh, a lot worse, a lot uh, harder to handle. We need to add in some seams so that they unfold correctly. So. Alt click and then Alt shift click where you want your seams to be and then go into the menu on the left and click on mark seam in order to do that. Then click U and unwrap. You can play with the margin uh, to space out your UVs more. Um, I usually like to do that so I have more space 
in between each one, in between each island. Um, you can also scale them out. You can also lay them out like rectangles if you want to, but I actually use a different technique um, using Photoshop that I'll get into later when I'm um, putting on the hair texture. Now we're going to go into edit mode and edit the hair, manipulate it, and get it to look the way you want. Um, I'm going to be using the proportional editing tool. Uh, you could also go into sculpt mode in order to move things around, uh, but I didn't in this instance. In order to get a better idea of what your hair will look like, you're going to want to set the shading to smooth and to add a subdivision surface modifier. At this point, I decided to taper the ends even more. Um, so I used the, um, I just right click, um, alt right click with edge select uh, to select all of the ends, those circular ends. And then I used the uh, individual origins setting to, and then scale to make them um, almost to just sm really small points at the end. At this point in time, we're going to uh, save out our UV layout um, by going into the UV image editor, going to image, going to save as image, and saving it somewhere where you can access it later. When I save my UV files, I save it with uh, zero fill opacity uh, because I just like it better that way. I, I find it easier, especially if I'm in a program where I can't see that transparency in the image. Now we're going to go into Photoshop to create that hair texture. In the last video, I used a similar method. I generated the hair texture, but before that, I straightened out the UVs. In this video, I'm not straightening out the UVs. I'm going to use the liquify tool to move the hair texture into the shape of one of those UV islands, and I'm going to um, copy-paste that for each one. Uh, this is a far less accurate method, uh, and you don't need to do this if you don't have Photoshop or even if you do it's much neater if you just straighten out the UVs until they're uh, into box shapes and then um, put the whole hair texture or just um, individual uh, islands of it or whatever like I did in the last video I used this method this time to save me time um, it would have taken a lot longer to do the UVs um, but you could just do the UVs that would probably be a lot a lot neater
now we're going to uh, input our texture into the material we need to create it. Material for the hair, just a regular diffuse material, and then select the image uh, from the color section. Next, we're going to go into the note editor to give the hair some more interest. I'm doing the same thing that I did in the last video. I'm going to add a glossy shader, glossy shader, and I'm going to use a mix node, and uh, I'm going to uh, make a displacement out of that same hair texture. Um, for the glossy shader, I'm going to be uh, making it contrast more so it can look, you know, a little better but this texture would have looked a lot better if the hair texture I used, the strands in that hair texture were smaller because they're a bit big here. Um, I tried to make them small, but I didn't make them small enough and it would take too long, taken too long to go back and fix that. So just take note that this is just um, not the best I could have done and it's by no means a finished product. and this is the finished product. Um, it's still not complete and in the next few images I'm going to show you a few more enhancements that I did but it's still not a complete product. Um, I only spent about an hour on this. Uh, I could add a lot more. I can make the shape a little better, uh, fix the texture, um, actually finish texturing her face. <laughs> but um, I think it looks good. Um, it's a good method to use and if you put more time and effort into it, you can make it look really good. Uh, so thanks for watching!